We want to Thank turn you. now to a, a very different subject. Earlier this week, Denny Blair, the head of the National Intelligence Administration, testified before Congress and said that the Christmas Day bomber, Umar Farouk Abdul Mulatab, should have been questioned by a special interrogation unit called the HIG, which it turns out uh, does not actually exist. I'm joined by our Justice Department correspondent Bob Orr this morning and our national security consultant Juan Zarate, former member of the National Security Council during the Bush administration. Uh, gentlemen, the first thing I want to do is just take a look at uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Blair said before the Congress earlier this week. So my question for each of you, starting with you, Mr. Leiter, is were you consulted regarding the decision to file criminal charges against Abdul Muttalib in civilian court? I was not. Mr. Blair, were you consulted? Uh, Senator Collins, I've been a part of the uh, deliberations which, which have established this uh, high-value inter interrogation unit, which we which we uh, started as part of the executive order after, as part of the decisions to close Guantanamo. That, that unit was created exactly for this uh, purpose, to make a decision on, on whether uh, the, a, a certain person who's detained uh, should be treated as a, uh, as a case for federal prosecution or, or for some of the other means. We did not invoke the HIG in this case. We should have. Frankly, we were thinking more of overseas people and Duh, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, put it then. We, that's what we will do now. And, uh, and so we need to make those decisions more carefully. I, I was not consulted at the decision. And then, duh, less than an hour later, uh, the same official issued this statement. My remarks today before the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs have been misconstrued. The FBI interrogated uh, the bomber when they took him into custody. They received important intelligence at the time, drawing on the XBI, FBI's expertise in interrogation that will be available to the HIG, the High Value Interrogation Group, once it is fully operational. In other words, <laughs> I mean, this defies explanation. He was talking about trying, and he was, this was seemed to be taking a little shot at the FBI. This was criticism, a little finger pointing here, and yet he pointed to something that hadn't even been formed yet, is, is what they should have done. Bob? It, it's hard to even understand how this happened, Bob. I was watching the hearing, and the, the senators weren't sure what was going on, and we weren't really sure what was going on, but within a few minutes, uh, the FBI was on the horn and was really outraged that the director of national intelligence would drop this kind of, as you say, finger pointing. And believe me, the people at the Justice Department took this as a real slap across the face. One, uh, is Dennis Blair going to be able to survive this? Because the words coming out of the White House were, you know, it was the old so-called senior official who didn't want to be quoted by name, but uh, he was using words like they were flabbergasted that yeah. something like this happened. I, I think this adds to additional criticism to Denny Blair. Uh, this is clearly a, an issue that opens a can of worms for the administration that they didn't want opened. And so no doubt Denny Blair is going to come under criticism. I think aside from the confusion as to who interrogated whom, et cetera, I think the comments actually reflect some degree of confusion as to how terrorists, whether they're captured in the United States or abroad, are actually to be handled. And I think it actually raises the more fundamental question that some critics have been raising over the past few months as to whether or not the administration understands that in the first instance you should be gathering intelligence from operatives versus preparing them for prosecution. And it went into some of the criticism, including some criticism I had of the Khalid Sheikh Mohammed trial decision, that it was likely to inject confusion into the intelligence gathering system. This, I think, reflects a bit of that confusion, unfortunately. Well, I think it also reflects this, can the government get out of its own way perception that I think a lot of people are having. I mean, I have to say, I think one of the reasons that you saw uh, what happened up in Massachusetts happen was once again, voters out there who who uh, just time and again look at the government and says, can't they get anything right? And, and I think that has a real political fallout to it. And the sad thing here is that in the interrogation of Abdul Muttalib, they really did some things right. And, and that was lost with what uh, ODI Director Blair said. Because in the early hours, Bob, when they grabbed this guy off the plane, the FBI interrogated him. And it was like dropping a nickel in the jukebox. Uh, they just asked him a question and he told him the whole story. It was only after he quit talking 
After he said, I'd been to Yemen, I was given the bomb, I trained with al-Qaeda. After he stopped talking, then they read him his rights, and then he stopped talking. You know, uh, we shouldn't let pass that today is, uh, was supposed to be a big day. This was it not, am I correct, the day that they were going to close Guantanamo. You right. think they're going to close Guantanamo one anytime soon? I don't think so, Bob. Uh, and those of us who had to deal with the issue before uh, realized that there were huge complications, both legal, diplomatic, and political, attached to trying to close Guantanamo. Um, the prior administration transferred 530 uh, Guantanamo detainees out. What you're left with is the core uh, bad set of actors, of terrorists. And I think uh, what you've seen is not only political resistance from the Hill, but questions about the legal status of these individuals. The detention uh, task force has now come back and said that a number of them, up to 50, should be held in preventive detention. Uh, that's hard to square because that was one of the main criticisms of the prior administration. How can you legally hold people without holding them accountable in a trial? Uh, and so that's a big question to be resolved. The number one question that should have been asked in the previous campaign and during the debates, I take some responsibility, I had the opportunity to do this. Both candidates said they wanted to close Guantanamo. But all of us forgot to ask the follow-up, how do you plan to do that? When do you think they'll get this thing closed, Bob? No time soon. I mean, it's going to be months and maybe even more than a year. And then remember this, even if more they... More than a year. I think that's possible. And I think even if they close down Guantanamo, all we're talking about is a change of address. You're going to take guys being held now at Guantanamo ad infinitum. People held forever, essentially. You're going to move them to Illinois. And guess what? We're going to hold them forever. And the other part is, so far, the Congresses have been unwilling to give them the money to even move them. I agree with you. I it's think a mess. Both of you. I think it's going to be a while before this yeah. gets closed yeah. down. Thanks to both of you.